Leo's welcome. Doing a singles reading for mid-December here, 2021. And I'm going to do a pick a color. You're going to get clear, green, or blue. Just for Gemini's. And really this is a singles reading as my intention for the accuracy of the reading. Uh, but it's for someone that really... Uh, is totally and completely single. If you have someone on your mind, I, I'd like you to check out the heart spread read that's up for December uh, by sign too. Uh, but always on Wednesday, we do Leo and Virgo here. So um, let's see what it's going to look like. I'm going to do four cards, um, trying to get an idea of what your soulmate is like. So it should not e either whatever you pick. We're going to start with clear. Okay, um, and um, whichever one you pick, it's not really meant to be a triggery read here because I'm simply asking in this reading for singles, Gemini's, in the mid-December time frame, what is your soulmate like? What are they like? Let's get an idea. Let's meet them emotionally. Here I'll read the moon. So we have the Ace of Swords. Um... You could say this is uh, how they are in and around love, in relationships, where they are. Um, I think what you're looking at here is an Aquarius moon person that's coming in for you. Um, so someone uh, that, if you picked clear, right? Um, air person, so for sure. But I think Aquarius seems most likely. If, if Gemini or Libra... Maybe uh, this is like a moon, air moon that's in the first house um, or something like this. Or, or an air moon that's in like a more dynamic house, like the fifth or something. Um, so let's see how that would make them act. Um, it, it was not someone that's going to be overwhelmed by their emotions. Someone that's going to be kind of logical. You know, you could say you think your thoughts uh, in Aquarius with an Aquarius moon, you know. Um, you could say maybe all of us do, but maybe with Aquarius, uh, fixed air, fixed energy here with this sword. Um, so, you know, you could also say about someone like this with this Aquarius energy, the moon is uh, inside what you want, what you need to feel secure. And this person would need, you could say that they need truth. Yes, they need truth, and they might be someone that very much expresses the truth all the time. Um, so it's definitely not Libra energy, right? It's not the kind of this is not the kind of energy that's going to want to just hold back to keep the peace. It's like you know, here it is. This is me. That's why I say it could be Aquarius. It's like, well, truth is, here it is. <laughs> maybe you might want to hold back. Say, well, maybe they can't handle the truth, so I'll water it down. This is not watering it down. So now what does that uh, bring in the blocking position here for this person is confrontations, okay? Um, so expect to find someone that is a little out there, a little uh, extra, that's the word I'm looking for, and assertive in like who, what they are. And one thing I want to say, have no doubts about the authenticity of this person. And I did say, like, maybe their moon's in the fifth house. This could be a Leo here in the five of wands, you know, uh, practicing confrontation to become a more, a more skilled fighter, you know. can also be Aries energy, you know, in the sun. Aries and Venus here, which I like to see Venus right here. And let's see if it is Aries. It would most likely be a Taurus uh, Venus where it's exalted. Here, let's see what we have. The moon card. A little bit different with the moon card too with this interpretation. Um, and to me that can bring in Piscean energy, 12th house energy. Uh, but I think we have the Venus here in the sun. And with the Venus in Taurus and being exalted... It's also a very loving Venus. Um, um, it's kind of like heaven on earth. It's an abundant kind of Venus. Their, their love is abundant. Um, one of the things you'll find here with this person, 
they won't tend to let go of anyone they've ever loved. You know, it's like it'll be natural to them. So they'll be kind of close or have some kind of relationship with anyone they've ever loved, you know. Um, but they're coming in with the Aquarius uh, moon and now a Leo sun. So they're fixed energies here. And they very well, I mean... Uh, they're across from each other, you know, um, so you, you could have them in opposition. So you could see a sun and moon in opposition here. So it's a very dynamic energy with the sun and moon in those two signs. Um, uh, you see the five of wands. Maybe this is why they feel like they have to, it's a struggle for them to express themselves, to be Leo, be seen, be heard. Not easy for them right but i think they take it in stride it's got to be some kind of balance when you're seesawing like that it's very hard to resolve and you just develop coping mechanisms here but with the venus and taurus they're going to be very dedicated to what they care about what they, their desires are they're not going to be very fickle guys so this is going to be someone they probably haven't been married a lot. They might not have been in a lot of relationships. There's someone that they, if they love you today, they're very likely going to love you tomorrow and next year. And they're exactly the kind, I hate to say this, but they, they could even forgive and, you know, um, forget. Maybe, I don't know about forget, but forgive. I mean, it's a, it's a very giving and beautiful and ample um, Venus energy, which is the love energy that they can offer here. Um, but um, even that, it, you know, it's at the um, bereft in a way of their uh, Leo being themselves, expressing themselves, because, you know, that's more energy of, uh, you know, me, what's for me. And what this brings with the Venus and Taurus is a person that's a little Libra-like and concerned about everyone else and what, even what do they need with Venus, because it's fixed earth, so about everyone else's needs, see. Which is why it's exalted. Maybe that's how we should all be. But now the moon comes in as the outcome. And there's something that's unseen about this person to themselves. And it has to do with this probably opposition of the sun and moon. And I hate to leave it like this, but I believe you could get on in Google or YouTube sun moon opposition and uh, leo um, um uh, uranus opposition or uh, something like this uh, however you process it you know um leo aquarius opposition and especially moon sun and you'll get something on this so describe um but i would call it when it's an opposition they develop uh, coping techniques here you know um, and so I'm not exactly sure what that would be, but I think that's what the moon is hinting at here. That's sort of that they don't see with the king of wands. Yeah, they don't see. It's like they they want to be. Uh, this to me is a very Leo card. So, and I'm asking what's not being seen. Um, and it's like uh, they really want to stand out more with the king of wands uh, here in that's what kind of they're not seeing yeah and maybe that's the opposition maybe when they try to stand out um I would, you would think that would be the uh, leo sun then naturally it wants to stand out it's its job and uh, you know and then so you have um the aquarius moon that's very logical and it's checking everything it's like well wait a minute you know um, we're not really that special. There's 8 billion people on the planet. And, you know, what makes us think that we should be so great? <laughs> and Leo's like, what? You know, of course I'm supposed to be great here. Um, so you find a person that's not perfect, but this is the one that's for you. Um, and it's someone that's really working on their path here, trying to understand. But I think that might help them, you know, maybe share if you think this resonates, if you think you might know who this is. Um, or the single I often see this someone who's not uh, in your life yet okay so thank you clear people I'm going to call you who chose uh, clear that was for you comment <clears throat> say clear because man I'll get confused you know okay for those that are choosing green 
singles, Gemini's, totally singles, completely singles. I want to talk to this person that's coming in for you. King of Pentacles person. This is, means they're most definitely a, a Earth Moon here. Um, Capricorn, Taurus, um, Virgo Moon. Not sure which. Just leave it like that. But what we're looking at in their personality. Now let's look at their sun sign. Seven of Wands coming in. Seven of Wands. Um, that seems like an Aries to me. They're the, this is the righteous defense of the castle. So it also say this. So think about this. Now they have an earth moon. And this seven of wands is an airy sun. Um, this just seems more like Capricorn to me than anything. I always thought Capricorn and Aries go together okay. You know, they unless they could be square. But this sun is in the righteous defense. And the castle, here's the thing. The castle represents the sun in astrology. And uh, the castle is ourselves, you know. So I always say, when I see this, you know, someone's, uh, they're in righteous defense. But here's the thing. They, there's just someone that feels the need to defend the castles in some sense, right? It might have to do with this Capricorn moon. Think about, I think, a Capricorn moon, it really wants, it really will work and press you because that's how what you need to feel secure and everything. It'll be your gut will press you. It's like, well, to really get clear, really get secure, you know, I'm I'm going to need to fix this and da da da. Um, and this is someone um, who knows, I could have had a lot of siblings in childhood, I get the feeling too. Um, they learned like early in life uh, how to kind of interact with other people, you know, and set boundaries here. They might tell you those stories. Now, this is uh, I'm not going to do the reversal. So, Ten of Cups. Um, typically, I see this as advice here. I also now want to see this as a Venus. I definitely uh, Capricorn Venus. So they could have the uh, Venus uh, Moon and uh, Venus Venus and Moon conjunct here together. I would not be really surprised. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so uh, they could have this Venus and Capricorn too. Once again, they would be really driven to stand by what it is they value and. Um, um, you know, work on that. That would make them really feel good, you know. Uh, this is someone they could have a tendency to work very hard. I'm not exactly seeing workaholism, but there's someone that could work very hard. And almost this also advice I hear to see this. So it's kind of like whatever they're doing, uh, they're doing the right thing. And it's it's making them feel very complete, like they, you know, they've got what they need. You know, they're doing a good job. I mean, they're coming in as the king of pentacles here. Could be a Virgo too, you know. I let's see what we get for like an outcome. Four of Pentacles. Um, so this is someone you're going to see them. I'm saying they're right for you. I'm not saying they're perfect, uh, but I think the way they're going to act, um, they kind of are a little bit as you approach them. Um, um, how's the what am I word I'm looking for? kind of heavy feeling about them, kind of serious feeling about them. Um, they may suddenly bust out into a smile and almost find it shocking. They, I mean, really could be, I'm trying to avoid, if they got a resting maybe bitch face, this person, like like a, like a really a resting bitch face. And it doesn't really say anything about them. <laughs> uh, but uh, they probably present as being someone uh, sturdy and, and substantial, I'm saying, you know, this person presents themselves that way. Um, and I see them with this card, it shows them having been in a position of holding back from relationships, I think, here, since it's a relationship reading. I could read Mars energy here, too. Um, they could have a Mars down in Taurus. I just have a feeling, you know, uh, more Earth energy. Um, and more determination so um, let me know greens I'm going to call you <laughs> leave a comment if you do please put green or I will get so confused but thank you guys alright we're going to move along 
we're moving through the deck here and uh, pick a card and now we're going to do uh, blues uh, third read for Gemini here looking at your singles I just want to get a beat on what they're like and are coming in this is the mid-December time frame let's see what we got pulling through here we got ourselves a fire sign but it's a moon position here um, <clears throat> this could be a Leo Leo moon um, person so a Leo moon person is going to be very bright there there I think almost you could almost say a Leo moon is more likely to light up the room blues <laughs> I call yourself the blues uh, Leo uh, Jim and I blues <laughs> Hey, that's a rock name. Uh, I got to remember that one. I called it, right? Uh, Gemini Blues. Probably exists. It's probably really good. But this Queen of Wands, uh, this is the energy of someone coming in. It's very uh, charismatic, very Leo, very warm. Someone really lighting up a room. People feel good about uh, around them, feel good about them, feel good about themselves around them. Um, they're very positive. Now, the only downside is they do not like to do shadow work. A lot of times the moons, right? That's where the shadow work is going on down there in I see and Leo moons, and usually like too, they're not the kind of people that really don't like like negative horror movies and anything like that, you know. Um, with the Leo moon, you know, it's the brightest moon, I think you could say. They're usually kind of beautiful. They usually have a beautiful smile. Like a, again, that smile kind of lights you up, you know. When they smile, everybody just kind of wants to smile. Ace of Wands here. Now we're coming in with their with their uh, sun energy. And that's an Aries. So we got an Aries sun with a Leo moon personality. So mark that down, guys. Get their astrology. Jeez, I don't understand why people don't have. Of course I want your time. You know, um, uh, that's important, right? Everyone knows times are important. So just force it out of them. I don't need to I don't need you to believe anything. Just give me your time, damn it. I'll take care of the rest. I'm an astrologer. Okay, so two of swords. Now, this is coming in in the Venus position for them. So it's coming in too, like their Venus. Again, this is your person. Say they're perfect. Try and get a beat on them. Um, they might have a Venus that's uh and they're they're sun and moon, by the way, pretty well placed. I mean they could have like a trine there, really kind of making it works well for them. Uh, but when it comes to love, there's some kind of challenge. Um, I think that that to me is a Gemini Venus. So they got this Gemini Venus, this Aries Sun, right? <sighs> Aries towards Gemini. That could work. Um, so they've had a difficult time. Now, remember I, I said with, uh, I think it was the clear how this person that probably hasn't had a lot of relationships, etc. This person had a lot of relationships. Now, I'm not saying they're a whore or a man whore or whatever. I'm just saying we're adults. It's like probably the uh, they've known the physical love of a man and or woman, as the case may be, and not unfamiliar to them. Um... And I think with this Venus, one the feeling they probably would uh, relate to the most, you might talk to you about, or you maybe get them to talk to you about this, is this kind of feeling unfulfilled and not really knowing why. It's like once they get something with all this fire, like, you know, in terms of love and relationship, um, they don't feel like they can kind of follow through with it and develop a, a relationship. Um, and they, I think what you're going to find with this person, they're going to have a story about choosing people that have, uh, that are a lack of emotional availability. That's what it comes down to. Choosing people who are emotionally not available, not there for them in one way or another, you know. Um, and uh, let's see what the outcome here is in the Ace of Cups. Well, it's kind of telling me, number one, that you are that person. I mean, that's corny as fuck. I am so sorry. I have to call you blue <laughs> but i really see it like that and it's like i think that the this person will see this like immediately they're going to say something about this um they might have a pisces mars i got a feeling about that one too pisces mars and that pisces mars 
might make some kind of significant aspect to your you in sinistry here, Gemini. Uh, in such a way that I think it's going to kind of... I love sinistry. You know, it's going to point out that there's something really going on here for you. And I think that this person, um, they're going to really light up to you particularly. And they're going to see this. Look at this eye. It's a very spiritual card. This is all about emotions. They're going to like... They're going to cry early in the relationship, man or woman. And they're going to talk to you about soulmates and um the way you make them feel and it's like they're maybe going to tell you they saw you in a dream I, i'm going to limit this but i really got a feeling about this coming with this two swords it's like this this is those mims it's like you know when you find the right person all of the wrong people don't matter anymore kind of energy somehow um and they're going to have that towards you so it'll be very like obvious about it here uh, how they feel about you, Blue. So let me know what you think about that one. Do say Blue because I would uh, be very confused otherwise. So thank you guys and let me know what you think.